We're going to start study guide three, which is alcohols, ethers, and related compounds. Um, all right. So uh, let's start with uh, some of those uh, uh, common molecules. As you can see, CH three, CH two, OH. In this one, this OH is connected with a chain hydrocarbon chain, so it's alcohol group. Phenol, this is called phenol. Well, pH is aromatic benzene, and on the top of it, there is a OH, so that is phenol. Ethers. This is ether group where O is in between the two carbons. All right, and uh, so that is ethers. So what do you have in common? You can see oxygen in all of it. How do they differ? So they differ uh, at a degree and what's attached to that oxygen you can see this oxygen is attached with hydrogen and phenol ring a benzene ring this oxygen is at attached with hydrogen and carbon ring this oxygen is attached with the two carbons so you can see it depends and what is the name of those functional groups label above and we worked on those now the characteristics now for ms uh, spectroscopy, uh, mass spectroscopy, hold on, I'm going to eat this. Okay, the OH, OH, which is M plus 1 peak at 18 for IR, okay, for IR is 3200 centimeter and NMR 1 to 5 ppm. For ether, it is M plus for MS and 25 to 4 ppm for NMR. So, those are the range you can get those peak for those particular ones, particular groups. Now, we need to know the, it's, a, it's basically organic one knowledge, primary alcohol where the carbon is uh, attached with OH and then it attach with um, other carbon and uh, so you can see how they are connected with just one carbon CH3. This carbon is attached with two carbon so it's secondary alcohol. This carbon attached with three of those it's tertiary alcohol. All right. Now nomenclature. So we need to name alcohols and phenol according to the rule. So I'm going to work with the, uh, the example. There is a rule. First, find the longest chain containing hydroxyl group. In this one, we have one, two, three, four, four, uh, five, five carbon chain, which is pentane. But instead of pentane, we can write pentanol pentane instead of e we can put pentanol now start numbering hydroxyl group you can see this one is at um, uh, carbon 2 and the name and number the substituent so that's a 2 all now list the substituents in alphabetical order so this is 2 all so we need to name it. So P comes first. So how do we name it? Pentane, pentane to all. So you can write that as well. But then you need to add one of those group here. That makes sense. So I would highly suggest first main thing is to find the longest longest carbon hydrocarbon chain start numbering near the hydroxyl one all right name and number the substituent so in this carbon 2 that is a methyl group the 2 methyl right 
and list of substituents in alphabetical order. So you can see 2 methyl and then indicate the location of OH group before the parent name. So you can write 2 methyl, 2 pentanol, and so on and so forth. All right, all right. Let me see how I'm going to scroll this. Okay, phenol. Phenol um, serves as a parent. Use ortho meta para for di substituted ring. If more than two substituent, number the ring. So the OH is given number one. The other substituent, uh, substituents should be given the lowest numbers as possible. So you can see this is ortho position. This is um, this is uh, they are close to adjacent carbon. This is one and three position. This is one and two position. So it's ortho. This is one and three, which is meta, and this is one and four, which is para. So when you look at this one. This is two are meta position, so it's a meta nitro phenol. All right, so that's where you can see nitro is the other substituent, uh, and it should be given the lowest number as possible. All right, let me scroll. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Okay, scroll up. Now, name the following alcohol. So now, we first again, we need to find the longest carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon chain is hexane, and but in at two and four, there is two OH groups. So it's a diol, right? So it's two four hexane diol. All right. Now you can see at 5 there is a 1 methyl group. So you can say 5 methyl, 2, 4 hexandiol. All right. Now let's start with this one. This is pentane, cyclopentane. But OH is attached, so cyclopentanol. Right. You can see here. 2 bromo but when you look at its configuration it's 1s it's s configuration 1s and 2s 2 bromo cyclopentanol all right that makes sense i'm going to erase that so you can see its s configuration and so on and so forth all right now when you look at this is the other compound you can see this is phenol group. The entire thing is phenol group. Now substituent attach on the 3 that is a methyl group and 4 bromo group. And we organize this is methyl and bromo. B comes first. So we can say 4 bromo. 4 bromo. It's not working okay 4 bromo 3 methyl and phenol okay all right now let's work on this compound this is basically phenyl group attached to carbon 1 so it's one phenyl and this is 1, 2, 3. All right. So, it's a pentane, but it is basically 2 propanol because it's attached. So, it's 2 propanol. And on this one, there is a phenyl group attached. This whole thing is a phenyl group. So, it's 1 phenyl, 2 propanol. Okay. All right. Let's scroll down and um, 
All right. So these are a summary of functional group and its nomenclature. You can see carboxylic acid, suffix is oic acid and carboxy acid, ester and oate, uh, amide, amino, uh, nitrile. So those are the suffix. So now well, let's go for esters one. Okay. We are going to go for esters group. Okay. Simple esters with no other functional groups present can be named by identifying two organic substituents and adding the word ether. So, this is tert butyl and this is methyl. So, we write tert butyl first and methyl and then we write ether. So, what we do? Two organic substituents and adding the word ethers. No dashes are used in the name. And there is a space before the word ether. So that is considered, uh, considered as an acceptable IUPAC name. For symmetrical, use dye. So for example, this is we draw tert butyl methyl ether. In this one, in this compound when you talk, we have ethyl group and we have phenyl group. So, where we can uh, organize in alphabetical order, ethyl, phenyl, ether. Alright, so I'm going to write that here, ethyl, phenyl, ether group. So, that is the name of the compound. And if two symmetrical use dye, if other functional groups are present, the more traditional IUPAC rules are used. The ether substituent is considered as an alkoxy substituent. For example, OCH3, which is called methoxy. All right, let's go to next page. And I'm going to scroll up. Now, this is something you guys need to draw. For tert butoxy one cyclohexene. Okay, so we have this is a tert butoxy and this is one cyclohexene. So that's where we are drawing this structure. This is tert butoxy and this is on the this is one, two, three, four. So that's why it's a third, four tert butoxy, one cyclohexene. So this is tert butoxy. And it's on carbon four. And this is cyclohexene. So that's where you are finding that. Now, um, I'm going to work on one of those and remaining you guys can work. Now, Epoxy alkane, the alkyl chain, and then uh, use prefix epoxy and indicate the location of oxygen and draw cis 2 3 epoxy pentane. All right, so in here you have this structure, but we need to draw cis structure. So remember. 2, 3 epoxy pentane is right here. And for cis, we use this notation. So, they are on the same side, dash notation. And they are on the same side. So, that's where you can draw that structure. And you can draw in a different way as well. All right. Then, oxidane. Uh, oxidine ring has a oxygen in position 1 and first substituent on position 2 and no number required if there is one substituent. So we need to draw trans. So remember one is wedge and one is dash. 2 chloro, 2 chloro, 3 methyl, methyl, methyl oxidane this is oxidane so this is how we draw 
all right trans means one is wedge and one is dash and that's where they are on opposite directions that's where you can draw and show it that makes sense all right alkene oxide okay replace the oxide by an alkene name it and word oxide now we need to draw one methyl cyclohexane oxide this is cyclohexane on the one this is methyl and this is cyclohexane oxide this is o group so that's where we draw this compound okay it's alkene oxide all right let's move on to next okay uh, all right solve the problems for 9.2 uh, 9.3, 9.4, and 9.5. It's all about nomenclature. So when you look at this is 5 carbon chain 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So and on 3 there are dimethyl groups. So 3, 3 dimethyl heptanol. This is cis because they are on a, a wedge. So this is 2 methyl, this is 2 carbon 2 cyclohexanol. All right. Um, this is 5 ethyl. All right. So 5 ethyl. First, we need to find out the um, carbon chain longest carbon chain this is non n nine carbon chain so when we start with one two three four five six seven eight and nine so that is non n and three all so on the three we can put oh group three all so that is done now six methyl so on carbon six there is a methyl group and on five there is uh ethyl group there is ethyl group so that's why it's 5 ethyl 6 methyl non n 3 all okay let's work on d here quickly first we need to have we need to find out the main carbon chain so you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it's septane but there is a 3 so th septane all septane 3 all then on 5 methyl group so it's 5 methyl and on 4 there is isopropyl group so that's why it's 4 isopropyl 5 methyl septen 3 all all right let's work on this one there are two oh so it's a diol right but let's see the longest carbon chain we have 1 2 3 4 5 five and six okay and that's a hexane but this is hexane one three hexane diol hexane one three diol on f on a two and four there is a methyl so it's two four dimethyl hexane one three diol okay now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's a cyclohexane, but this is cyclohexanol since it's OH attached. And on 3, it's tert-butyl. And on 4, ethyl group. So we can say 3 tert-butyl, 4 ethyl cyclohexanol. Okay. All right. Let's move forward here now we need to do we need to draw um, um, a 7 7 dimethyl pentane 4 all so you can see 7 7 this is on the fourth and you can draw that so I'm going to go quickly on this one 
this is you just check your answers and uh, work on your own but this is something you really need to work on it this is trans cyclohexane one two diol so that's why it's says trans one is wedge and one is dash so that's represent trans diol two oh and it's on one and two position and then cyclohexane so that covers all of it main is cyclohexane main carbon chain and then to OH all right this is methoxy uh, so you can see methoxy cyclohexane um, this is ether group methyl methyl group and propyl group so you can say methyl propyl ether okay so that's where you can name that this is 2 methoxy 4 ethyl 3 methyl heptane so this is heptane 8 carbon chain okay all right this is 4 methyl uh, 5 methyl all right 5 methyl 4 uh, okay let me see yeah so basically it's um, 5 methyl 1 4 propyl you guys need to calculate the main ring all right let's move on this one it's a 2 third butyl third butyl 3 methyl cyclohexanol this is cyclohexanol entire one the main one all right let me erase all right okay all right let's move on okay now 9.5 all right so this is okay 2 methyl oxidane this entire thing is oxidane 2 methyl oxidane okay and uh, so that way you can write this is cis this is cis 2 3 epoxy and hexane the entire thing is hexane all right So you follow the IUPAC rules and name it. Now boiling point of alcohols, alcohols properties. When you consider boiling date, boiling point data, and you can see uh, this is just round off: methanol sixty, ethanol seventy, propanol hundred, and butanol. So larger the chain, methanol is CH three OH. Ethanol is CH two CH three OH. Propanol CH three CH three that is CH three CH two OH CH three CH two CH two OH. So this is one carbon chain methanol one carbon ethanol two carbon chain propanol three carbon chain butanol four carbon chain. So, larger the carbon chain, higher the boiling point. And what do you see the trend at the level of intermolecular forces? You can see greater IMF force. The larger the change, it's greater the Van der Waals force. And the larger the boiling point, because it's being more difficult to break them down. More carbon chain, it's difficult to break them down. So, that's the trend you will see in the boiling point. Now, when you look at methane, chloromethane, and methanol, what trend, what kind of uh, uh, intermolecular forces you will see? So, you can see that London dispersion, only methane is CH4. Chloromethane, it's CH3, Cl, chloromethane, and methanol, CH3OH. Now, in... Uh, Chloromethane, a, uh, 
London force and dipole dipole force because this chlorine is electronegative and that's where there is a dipole dipole force exists. While in here OH involved that forms hydrogen bonding. Everything remains same. London forces are dipole dipole, but it has a strong hydrogen bond. So when you look at uh, the boiling point is higher for the methanol. So in which state would you expect to find each at room temperature? So that you can find solid liquid or gas based on the IMF. Now what trend is supported by this data? So let's look at propanol, isopropanol, butanol and tert butanol. So branches basically, these are propanol, just straightforward uh, CH3, CH2, CH2OH and this one is going to branch, one branch, two branch and four branch. So that's this one, the more the branch boiling point decrease. So what that means, what do you infer? That London forces decrease with more branching present. So that's how they affect the property molecular structure. All right. Now, when you look at compare the boiling point, when you compare the boiling point of diethyl ether with butanol, which one have higher boiling point and why? This is diethyl ether, uh, diethyl ether, London force dipole dipole and boiling point lower. Why? Because this one forms hydrogen bonding and the hydrogen bonding as we learn in general chemistry 1 and organic 1, if there is hydrogen bonding boiling point is higher. And that's why alcohol has special properties. Now, alcohols, ethers and epoxides are soluble in organic solvents such as DMSO, DMF, CH2, Cl2, etc. So, we remember that alcohols, ethers, epoxides with 5 or less carbons are soluble in water. But if it is more than 5 carbons, they are insoluble in water. Why? Because it's again the same thing. The smaller the carbon, they forms the IMFs and they form hydrogen bonding with water. Now we need to rank the compounds in, a, in order of increasing boiling point. Cyclohexanol, methyl cyclohexane, 2 methyl cyclo, uh, cyclohexane. So now we need to rank. 2 methyl cyclohexane, cyclohexanol, and methyl cyclohexane. All right. Now, when you look at this, OH makes hydrogen bonding. That's why it has a higher boiling point. While this one is just a London force, which is lower boiling point compared to this one. So, you can see uh, the explanation. Now, alcohols. At this point, you know some of the methods to prepare alcohol. We learned some of those. Oxymercuration, demercuration and hydroboration reaction for the synthesis, al for synthesis of alcohol from alkenes. And you can see oxymercuration, demercuration. All right. So this is alkene, C double bond C and this is alkene. In oxymercuration, you need Hg, um, HgOAC2, H2OTHF, and NaBH4. Now, what happened that these bond breaks, OH bond joins here uh, and H forms here. This is the follows anti-Marconikov uh, addition rules. In hydroboration, we are adding OH and H, but it's in the same direction. You can see H and OH in the same direction. Same thing, double bond, it breaks, and H and OH, they are going to 
um, add in the same. It's a sink non Marconic uh, Marconikov addition. We need BH3 and THF and H2O2 NOH minus in that reaction uh, to form the um, alcohol. All right. Now draw oxymercuration demercuration reaction for 2 methyl 2 pentene. So remember again there is a double bond. When it breaks in presence of THF, HgOC2, H2O, we need NaBH4 and OH minus 1 in here. In that we are adding OH on the top and H is here. We form the trans product. Now we need to draw hydroboration. Remember in hydroboration we need BH3 and THF in H2O2 and OH. OH and H is adding this bond breaks. OH and H is going to add in the same uh, direction. Right? Now remember uh, those two reactions that the way you can prepare alcohol there are other ways too but those are the main ones now when you SN1 SN2 substitution using base and alkyl halide as in substrate so we have bromomethane bromobutane in the presence of COH KOH which is strong base it's going to attack one of those carbon and you can see its OH is going to substitution instead of Br this electron pair is going to take by Br and it's substituted by OH. It's a sometimes possible inversion if chiral center is formed. This is SN2 reactions backside attack. Now in here 2 bromo 2 methyl propane and OH. This is 2 more bromo 2 methyl propane and then under strong base KOH, its KOH is going to attack and then the carbocation forms and then OH is going to join here. Alright, so that's the synthesis, inversion and retention of chiral center form and racemic mixture forms in this case. Okay. Okay, hydroxylation of alkenes to form diols when we know this one is for organic one. This is hydroxylation, alkene chain, OS4, OSO4, NHSO3 or OSO4 NMO. And you can see sink addition occurs, OH, OH and it's a sink addition occurs to form diols. To form diols. So we need to write reaction of hydroxylation of cyclohexene and show stereochemistry of products. So using this we apply here. And the same thing this one breaks and OH and OH forms. Now remember two uh, stereochemistry forms cis and cis again right so you can see both OH are on the same side a new method reduction of aldehydes ketones acids and esters into alcohols so two reagents are possible but be careful and uh, because not both react with these functional groups for example NaBH4 ethanol or LiAlH4 ether those are the reactants in H3O plus both reduce aldehydes and ketones to the correct alcohol now LiAlH4 works better for esters and required for carboxylic acids so remember normally an alcohol cannot be directly reduced to alkane in one step for example this is aldehyde and you can see 
uh, only one hydrogen is added in here this one breaks and then you are adding one hydrogen uh, sorry the, you are going to add that hydrogen in ketone secondary only one hydrogen is added in here in uh, esters two hydrogens are added okay so that's one the bond is breaking and then two hydrogens are added here uh, carboxylic acid two hydrogens are added right write the product all right write the products of the reduction with nabh4 ethanol for butanol dimethyl ket uh, ketone and propionic acid so this is you can see in uh, reduction happens and for butanol this is butanol in nabh4 and ethanol what happened that h is going to add up here right so that is you can follow uh, one of those reactions nabh4 one of those reactions with aldehyde and you can see one hydrogen added and that's where you can predict this product remember you follow you need to be uh, you need to follow these guidelines for aldehydes or for ketones or for secondary alcohols or for esters and then you can apply in here there is no reactions in here where there is a hydrogen added so you can write this is what this is a propionic acid that's why that's why no reaction happens all right and this is dimethyl ketone and uh, you can see for the esters two hydrogens are added so you can write accordingly would you obtain same product using LIALH4 so these are some of those you need to work on it on your own all right Another new method, addition of organometallic reagents to aldehyde and ketone, Grignard 1. And uh, so it's sensitive to H2O, difficult to synthesize and most to be in a dry environment. So for formaldehyde, um, uh, this is HOH and ch3 mgx so ch3 is negative delta negative this is delta positive which is going to attack in this delta positive since this is delta negative and delta positive ch3 is going to join and those pair of electron goes here becomes delta negative now remember delta negative is going to pull one of those hydrogen and this electron goes back and in second step you see the bond formation so formaldehyde you see the same way propanol um, acetone and cyclohexane uh, cyclohexanone carboxylic acids don't work with Grignard reactions so ester can also react to form alcohol with two identical substitute substituents to form Grignard reagent so that's something you need to be mindful